you awaken as the sun begins to rise. You straighten out your jacket and retie your boots. Appearances count. Ah, so you are back. It's a garlic souffle, Mordavian style. Gishin used to do a steady business before this swamp prevented traders and tourists from coming. Now we mostly make our money off of food and drink. The castle was once that of the Boyar. Now we do not know who lives there. Besides the ones that come in here in the evening, there are quite a few others. You probably have met the shopkeeper, the gravedigger, and the burgomeister. And then there's Nikolai, and that crazy Dr. Cranium. Ah, he is a harmless old man who wanders around looking for his dead wife. It must be a shame to grow old all alone. Dr. Cranium came to Mordavia several years before this swamp closed off the pass. No one knows much about him, but no one trusts him. It is rumored that he conducts strange experiments. The shopkeeper knows everything that goes on in town. She also makes a delicious avocado and garlic sandwich, which she sells as rations. The Burgomeister keeps to himself and lives in his office. Besides, the gravedigger is a strange one, though he is a good carver of tombstones and digger of graves. I know little of the forest, for I seldom leave my inn. You should speak with the Burgomeister. Perhaps he can tell you more about it. I am well, as always. The innkeeper nods at you. Still you remain. It is a wonder you have managed to live so long. What is it you want? This town was quiet until you arrived. I am keeping my eye on you. Castle Borgov is north of the town. The last of the Borgov family left this well a years ago. Now it is inhabited by some cousin. The people of the castle do not bother this town. I suggest strongly that you do not bother the people of the castle. 
it used to be that the only monsters around here were the occasional wyverns. Now there are many dangerous things in the valley. It is safe only within the town gates. Dr. Cranium is an idiot and a madman. If you are wise, you will stay away from him. Nikolai is an old man and easily confused. His wife has been missing for years now. He cannot face the fact that she is gone. Hmm. Try not to make a nuisance of yourself. It's you again. It's been a quiet day so far. Made it back, did you? <laughs> so what can I do for you this time? What would you like to know about? Dr. Cranium is a very strange man. No one knows what goes on in the back room of his house, except maybe Igor, and he won't talk about it. Someday, the mad doctor will blow us all up with one of those experiments of his. You mark my words. Ah, you see, there used to be a very active adventurer's guild here in town, but it's been empty and locked up since I can remember. is named Dimitri. He is responsible for keeping order in the town, and he is very serious. But there was some scandal about his grandmother, but it was hushed up. Our bird is a strange one, isn't he? Digging graves and carving tombstones during the day, helping that crazy Dr. Cranium at night. You know he's not up to any good. Decent folk have nothing to do with him. Yeah, my sad departed husband. His name was Boris. Gone three years now. He was such a good man. Things haven't been too busy lately. I have plenty of time to get caught up with my knitting. You tell Olga that the gatekeeper's name is Boris Stovich, and ask if they're related. Aha! So that's where the so-and-so went. Uh, tell him he's a rotten old good Nick. Ah, that no I can't fool? If you see him again, tell him he's a lady love and a swamp scum besides. I expect you plan on going adventuring some more. Well, I suppose the grave digger has some room left at the cemetery? <laughs> As my lost husband used to say, may all your travels lead somewhere. Headstone carver stares at you and then goes back to work. That did. <laughs> Igor like candy. You're nice to Igor.
It doesn't say. Igor, very happy. <laughs> Little graveyard humor there. <laughs> oh, Igor not hear rumors. Igor not know Olga's husband run off years back. Nobody tell rumors to Igor. Guild there. Burgomeister got key. Cemetery east of town. Major tourist attraction. place. No go near. You be very sorry you go near. You tell Igor about your adventures since your last visit. Igor listens while he works but doesn't comment. He looks at you and then goes back to work. Which book do you want to read? As you scan through Hero, the Journal of General Job Adjusting, you find quite a bit of information that might be useful here. There are a series of articles about the land of Moldavia. The town originally grew up around Castle Borgov. The Borgovs were the boyars, or local noblemen, assigned the role of guarding the area from invaders. The chapter on Fauna describes a number of interesting creatures. The Necrotaur is a vicious carnivore with big, sharp teeth. Some of the other monsters sound even more horrific. In the forest lives the Lishi, a creature known for playing practical jokes on travelers and playing riddle games, but which can also be helpful to those it likes. You learn about the Rosalka, the spirit of a murdered, unmarried woman. Such spirits are said to inhabit lakes and rivers. They try to avenge themselves by drowning any man foolish enough to approach them. You could really learn a lot by reading this magazine thoroughly instead of just browsing through it. Isn't it nice that we included a complete copy in your game box? The book turns out to be an advertising brochure. It says, I, Dr. Cranium, predict that someday one of my descendants will become the subject of a major computer game. The Castle of Dr. Brain from Sierra Online. Jeez, how cheesy can you get? The book is all about using spells in unusual and creative ways, such as calming a fire, using alternate flame and frost spells to make something brittle and break, and so on. You pick up a number of useful tips which will improve your spell casting. You read through the book on spell casting techniques again. It hasn't changed. It doesn't... Which book do you want to read? This book teaches the ancient oriental art of talk fool. How to overcome opponents by attacking them with the unpronounceable na names of martial arts forms and confusing them with fortune cookie wisdom. You get lost somewhere between karate and kuksur. This book this book teaches you how to use the stair stepper to build strong leg muscles and talks about the importance of whole body development. It says to build up your strength gradually by adding weights to the baskets. You study the exercise manual again. It all looks pretty simple. Add weights to the baskets and walk back and forth on the steps until you get worn out. Hey, this isn't a lending library. Nice try, but the bookshelf won't budge. If there's a secret passage around here, it's hidden a different way.
There's only a certain amount of punishment your body can stand on any given day. Enough pain, enough gain for now. Try again tomorrow. That did... The frame is concealing a secret passage, but you can't see any way to open it from here. By moving the hooks around, you have opened a secret passage. You climb down the ladder into a seedy looking room. A massive door blocks off a smaller room in the rear. This isn't as dusty as the Adventurer's Guild, and the torches look recently lit. Your eye is drawn to the Thieves' Guild recruiting poster on the back wall. It gives you fond memories of your home guild. Behind the innocent-looking surface of this room lies great danger. You sense that traps for the unwary are everywhere. This is a Thieves' Guild recruiting poster, featuring a sophisticated worldly master thief. In an early excess of 3D poster art techniques, the artist has arranged the poster so that the thief is holding an actual plastic card. A legend at the bottom says, Don't thieve home without it. Oh, that's a really unthief-like thing to do. Causing wanton damage tends to discourage people from leaving their valuables out for you. The poster is firmly attached to the wall. There's nothing behind this one. The poster is firmly attached to the wall. There's nothing behind this one. The double doors are locked shut. The lock itself looks sophisticated, but the door has a simple sliding latch. If you had the right tool, you think you could easily slip the latch. That... This is not a good place to practice throw. You slip the guild membership card between the doors and unlatch the lock. Your guild card. Don't leave home without it. There are a number of fascinating books about thief techniques on the bookshelves. Of special interest is the one on disarming traps. It says that with a new Mark II thieves toolkits and a bit of skill in picking locks, you can locate and disarm almost any mechanical trap. In the section on surviving magical traps, the book suggests taking up religion. There is also a book on thief marks that tells you all about this secret language of thieves. You learn a number of new symbols and combinations. There are a number of... In, there is a... 
don't see any way to open the safe. It looks as if the knob is missing. There's nothing in these barrels. There's nothing in these barrels. There does seem to be something under this barrel, but you've got no clue of what to do with it. That didn't do anything useful. Some barrels have been stacked up in the corner, probably leftovers from wild guild parties. There's nothing in these barrels. On close examination, you find some scratches that might be thief marks behind the side drain. Rummaging around under the floor drain, you find a round knob with a point on one side, which you pick up. Thieves have had to clean up after themselves since a few unfortunate accidents with maintenance personnel. You don't see any way to open the safe. It looks as if the knob is missing. Now that you've replaced the safe knob, the filch safe looks ripe for the cracking. You know, kind of like a walnut. To open the safe, you will need to spell out the combination with alternating right and left turns. You quickly rifle the opened safe. Unfortunately, it looks as though legions of Thieves Guild initiates have been here before you, as all the money is gone. You do find five throwing daggers placed here for, well, <laughs> safekeeping. <laughs> the only other usable thing in the safe is a single lockpick, half buried in dust in one corner. You grab the lockpick and the daggers. you've found a particularly diabolical poison gas trap. Fortunately, it's just like one of those described in the book on traps, so you are able to disarm it. Ah, that did it. The lock springs open with a satisfying snick. Inside the desk, you find a complete and hardly used Mark II Thieves Toolkit. It has all the latest facilities for opening the toughest locks, cracking safes, and disarming mechanical traps. There is one lockpick missing from the set, so you add yours to it. You also find a fancy match set of three throwing daggers, which you add to your collection. Finally, you find some sort of diary or logbook in the desk. The title of the book reads, Memoirs of a Master Manipulator. Modest, eh? You take it out and set it on the desk but it's a little heavy to carry around with you. You've stripped the desk of everything useful. You leaf through the Chief Thief's logbook. An interesting entry speaks of a proposed night raid on the castle. The guild members would use a secret passage to avoid notice. You wonder which secret passage that might be. A later entry in different handwriting indicates how far the guild had declined recently. It seems to be just a bunch of doodling and some nonsense words. It says, 
bad boys yell, good girls giggle, rich girls run. Not quite on the same standard as a nighttime castle raid. One of the final entries says, Fred and Frank caught out at night without hooks. Fred is dead and Frank sank. I'm the last. An ambitious thief will try to prosper by hook and by crook. The log closes with some incoherent ramblings about passing the deadly tentacled beast, then the horror, shadows of darkness enfold me, madness and mockery in the dark one's chamber. Sounds as though the author was in a chemically modified state. Ah, you found a hidden safe. Good work. It sounds pretty safe. You set up the thieves' toolkit and try to disarm any traps that may be on the safe. have successfully disarmed the safe. Using the Mark II toolkit, you quickly manage to get the safe open. Inside you find six crowns, a throwing dagger, and a potion labeled Poison Cure. They seem a fitting reward for your efforts, so you take them. Ah, you found a hidden safe. Good work. You set up the thieves' toolkit and try to disarm any traps that may be on the safe. You have successfully disarmed the safe. You crack the safe using the Mark II toolkit. You take the healing potion, throwing dagger, and five crowns someone was foolish enough to leave inside. Press the barrel tap, but nothing comes out. Instead, the barrel slides across the wall to reveal some sort of mechanism. This is a door unlocking mechanism. To operate it, push each of the tiles until all nine tiles have been set to the correct pattern to open the door. There are no gray tiles in the solution. Nonetheless, Four colors on each of nine tiles yields over 250,000 possible solutions. Guesswork won't help. You leaf through the Chief Thief's logbook. An interesting entry speaks of a proposed night raid on the castle. The guild, a later, it says, Bad boys yell, good girls giggle, Rich girls run. Not one of the final. That did. This is a door unlocking mechanism. To operate it, 
Push each of the tiles until all nine tiles have been set to the correct pattern to open the door. So, you found my secret passageway. You must excuse me, I, I'm not quite myself anymore. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. I won't hurt you. It is good to talk to someone again. It has been so very long since anyone has been here. Ah, but I'm forgetting my manners. Welcome to Mordavia. I am the chief thief here. Well, I'm also the only thief here other than you, but that is beside the point. Pleased to meet you. It's so good to have someone of my own kind to talk to again. Interesting. You have had a good deal of experience. If you study up on trap disarming and thief signs, you will have almost every skill you need to become a master thief. Perhaps even a chief thief like myself. My name? Oh, you can call me Chief. No point in being informal here just because no one else is around. This was once a very prosperous town before the swamp cut off the only passages in or out of here. That shop is very securely locked up at night. The only way to get into it would be to very literally break in the window, and that would attract unwanted attention. Do not try it unless you want to get caught. Do you mean Nikolai? Yes, his would be an easy house from which to gain money. Be wary though, the Burgomeister's bedroom is beside the house, and Dimitri watches out and listens for the old man. If you ever plan to stay at the inn, or even just eat there, I would not recommend stealing from that place. The people there are suspicious of strangers anyway, and would know who to blame. A strange man, a very strange man. No thief ever managed to break into his house unnoticed, or steal anything from there. It's a very dangerous place. Do not even think of trying to break into it through the door. The last thief who tried that did not even get the door open. We found his toolkit lying beside the door, but we never found him. Do you like it? I'm afraid it is not very becoming, and to think I once despised cockroaches. It would be too dangerous for you to help me. If I, a master thief and chief of a major guild, dare not go back to the monastery, you would be wise not to even think of such a thing. I made a terrible mistake and broke into the monastery one night. It had been abandoned for years, and I thought maybe something had been left behind there. I discovered a secret passage to the basement. That place gave me the creeps. I felt like something was watching me all the time. When I got to the basement, I discovered a small statue I could easily take. When I tried to pick it up, I felt very, very dizzy. I made a terrible... I discovered a secret. When I got to the basement, I discovered a small statue I could easily take. When I tried to pick it up, I felt very, very dizzy. When I awoke from my faint, I looked like this. You can imagine my horror. 
Do you think it's fun to have six legs and no matching socks? Do you think I enjoy running around frantically and stopping suddenly for no apparent reason? Do you think it's fun to look in the mirror and wish you had a giant fly swatter so you could commit suicide? Is that your idea of fun? You idiot! You! You! Oh, forgive me, I'm just not myself lately. We are not exactly set up right now to fence stolen items. There are several places around the town where you might be able to find a bit of loose cash, though. I will tell you what. You go out and steal something from someone in town and come back and tell me about it. If it sounds like you know your basic thief skills, I will let you know where the really good places are. You are a very brave and honorable man to offer such a thing. Are you certain you are in the right profession? Do you want to be a thief or some kind of a hero? The two rules are usually mutually exclusive, you know. Yeah, that's much too healthy for my taste. I can't eat those until they've sat out for a few weeks. No thank you, it will stick to my teeth. That didn't do anything. That didn't do it. It does. Must you go so soon? We were just getting to know one another. There's only a certain amount of punishment your body can stand on any given day. Enough pain, enough gain for now. Try again tomorrow. He looks at you, and then goes back to work. You greet the old man. Good day. Have you seen my honor? Tell the old man goodbye. If you see Anna, tell her I am looking for her. You need to bait the trap. You bait the trap with avocado from your sandwich. Avocado was never high on your list of favorite foods anyway. The trap starts working.
Ah, you're just in time to witness a magnificent scientific experiment. I have managed to harness the very primal force of lightning at my beck and call. Now I shall use it to create life itself. Watch this. That was not quite the experimental result I expected. Uh, but never mind that. It is merely a momentary setback in the annals of science. I shall readjust the magnetic electrical stimulation system and try again another day. You say hello to the scientist. It is good to see you again. I trust the Antwerps gave you no trouble. Tell Dr. Cranium about your first adventures in the Spielberg Valley. He seems vaguely interested in your tales of the Baron and his children, but his eyes positively light up when you mention the Antwerp. Ah, so you are the Spielberg hero. I went there on an Antwerp gathering expedition a few months ago. The people there are still talking about your adventures. You continue by telling Dr. Cranium of your encounters with the eccentric wizard Erasmus, the deadly kobold magic user, and the ogress Baba Yaga. Turned her into a frog? Oh, such puppycock! There is a perfectly straightforward scientific explanation for all of those events. There is no such thing as magic. Understanding and harnessing the power of nature is just one aspect of science. By observing and performing experiments based on the observation. Here you are, one freshly brewed healing drink. Sip it if you get hurt, and its beneficial vitamins and other ingredients will help your body to recover quickly. Here you are, one freshly brewed universal poison antidote. You ask Dr. Cranium if he can spare an empty flask for specimen collection. Of course, of course! <laughs> I am always delighted to assist scientific research of any kind, and I have plenty of flasks. You may have this one. I have come to the conclusion that lightning is electrical in nature, which would put it in the realm of fire. Fortunately, there have been an increasing number of storms here lately, so I have been able to harness some of the lightning and store it for experimental use. My neighbor Nikolai is not actually as old as he now appears. He has been very unhappy since his wife's disappearance some 15 years ago. I can understand his disappointment. She never brought me back the berries I needed for an experiment. I am convinced that the primal force of life is electrical in nature. Of course, it must also involve water for life and pizza, without which life would be boring. <laughs> Antwerps are truly fascinating species. They reproduce by splitting into a number of tiny Antwerps, each with their own genetic code. They cannot split voluntarily, however. They only reproduce when cut or stabbed. My test Antwerp came from Spielberg Valley, where there was an Antwerp population explosion last spring. Oh, this is a sad, ignorant land where everyone seems to think more of magic than of science. Still, it is a good place for a scientist to work. There are many fascinating monsters to study, and I can get all the dead bodies I need. You say goodbye. Oh, it is always a pleasure to have one such as you visit. Perhaps I should wait a day or two before resuming my Frankie experiment. It is very important that the right person stay in charge here.
Welcome again to the gates of the castle, Borgov. I hope that you've been enjoying your visit to Mordavia. I am happy to know you're finding your way in Mordavia. I'm sure you will find this a most exciting place to visit. You tell Boris what Olga said about him. He blushes. Olga was always opinionated. I grew tired of listening to her complain about me all the time. My wife has been gone for many years now. I do not know if anyone at the castle is named Katrina. My house is just inside the gates, and I seldom see anyone from the castle. Since the last boyar passed away many years ago, the castle has been uninhabited until recently. Now it is owned by the master, who is also my employer. It is not a bad job. I am paid well and on time. Be careful in your travels. You never know what you may meet. Good luck, and may your feet move faster than the thing that chases you. The stream water is cold, crisp. Still you remain. It is a wonder you have managed to live so long. everywhere when you should be staying in this nice safe town. Tell Olga about what you've been doing in Moldavia. And be sure and keep me informed. I need to know everything that goes on around here. Someone's got to have a clue after all. You tell Olga that Boris says she complains about him all the time. Well, if he'd ever been here to get his work done instead of spending all his time carousing at the inn, I wouldn't have had to complain. And you can tell him I said so, huh? You take care. Don't want to see your funeral. Go ahead and walk to the cemetery. As my husband used to say, come back again, sunshine or rain.
Good day and welcome back. Have you been enjoying your adventures around here? I am happy to know you are finding your way in Mordavia. I'm sure you will find this a most exciting place to visit. Tell him that Olga thinks he was too lazy. Lazy? What was there to do in a shop with no customers? Once the swamp cut off trade here, we had nothing to sell. I had nothing to do there. So just because I would sit at the inn and talk with the other men, she thought I was lazy. All she ever did was sit around and give me orders when I was in the shop. What was the point of dusting if no one came in the shop to notice the dust? Be careful in your travels. You never know what you may meet. Farewell, and may your path lead to your goal. The hawk flies free, never to be caught by the likes of thee. Black again, Fosun. What have you heard lately? So, you haven't been eaten yet. <laughs> we'll see how long you last traipsing about everywhere when you should be staying in this nice, safe town. You tell Olga that Boris didn't like being ordered around all the time. I wouldn't have had to order him around if he would only have done his work. I just wanted the shop to be neat and clean in case anyone came in. How does he expect me to do all the work around here by myself? Yeah, this was his family's business after all. or uh, other large things. Don't want to see your funeral. Do they can walk to the cemetery? As my husband used to say, come back again, sunshine or rain.
fine autumn day to be walking. A man who walks everywhere will see much, I always say. I am happy to know you are finding your way in Mordavia. I'm sure you will find this a most exciting place to visit. To tell Boris that Olga is having trouble running the shop without him. There is much to do to keep the shop straightened up. My family always work together to keep it going before. If only Olga wouldn't nag me all the time. She and I used to enjoy running the shop when we actually had things to sell. What is the point of even running a shop when there is no business? You have been very lucky so far in Mordavia. May you never meet something you cannot handle. Be careful in your travels. You never know what you may meet. May your journey take you where you wish to go. Do you have any news? So, you have... Tell Olga that Boris doesn't see any reason to keep the shop open when there's nothing left to sell. No business. <laughs> you just tell that man about my avocado and garlic sandwiches. <laughs> People come in and buy them all the time. <laughs> Don't want to see your funeral. <laughs> Do they get walk to the cemetery? <laughs> As my lost husband used to say, may all your travels lead somewhere. A fine autumn day to be walking. A man who walks everywhere will see much, I always say. It... You tell Boris about Olga's avocado and garlic sandwiches. How I used to love her avocado and garlic sandwiches. We had them on our wedding night, you know. You should have seen the garlic and avocado flowers decorating our wedding cake. Oh, beautiful. And she baked 
the cake herself. Oh, she always was a good cook. You remind me of how much I miss my wife. I shall go back and visit her. You hand one of your sandwiches over to the gatekeeper. An avocado and garlic sandwich? Why, I haven't had one of those for years. You are most kind, but I fear that it would make me homesick. Thank you. These remind me of the ones my wife used to make. Be careful in your travels. You never know what you may meet. Goodbye and good travels. You have a strange, disquieting feeling along with a sense of sorrow, longing, and unfulfilled desires as you near the lake. The briny lake seems to draw you towards it. Hi again. I'd hoped you'd come back. It gets lonely here with no one to talk to but the fish. You know, we'd better not touch. I'd have to drag you to your death, and I really don't want to do that. You've been kind to me, and I like you. Welcome back. You seem to be finding your way nicely in Mordavia. You sure have been a lot of places. The only place I've been besides the lake is a swamp, and that's not exactly a tourist attraction. I may have been places while I was alive, but I can't remember back that far. I swim a lot and comb my hair and look for people to drag to their deaths. It's not exactly a busy schedule. The swamp to the southeast is a very scary place. I swam there once out of curiosity. I was combing the weed and goo for my hair for weeks afterwards. The will-o'-the-wisps were friendly enough, but those grasping arms, ugh. Weirdest of all were the creatures standing guard near some sort of tomb. Well, I'm not going back to that swamp for anything. I call it a tomb, but it was more like some sort of pillar. It felt magical and, and very, very cold, even to me. I stay as far away from it as I can. <sighs> Scary. Will-o'-the-wisps are the souls of lost children. They play around the swamp at night. They look like little sparkles of light. Watch it, though. They love to play hide-and-go-seek in the swamp, and most people who try to follow them there don't return. The grasping arms will try to drag anyone into the swamp. Now, they can't get you if you stick to the grassy areas, but I don't recommend you go visiting there. The guards near the tomb were really weird. They looked like they had been human once. Now, I don't know what they are. Well, they aren't dead or undead, as far as I can tell. Just awful. I live, well, maybe not live exactly, but I do reside here. It's a nice lake, but as a recreation area, it leaves something to be desired. The only boats around here are sitting at the bottom. Fishing tends to catch the fishermen, 
Uh, the swimming is pretty good if you don't mind drowning. All in all, it's not an ideal vacation spot. Mermaid? What do I know of mermaids? I'm a Rizalka. You do realize I'm undead, don't you? I mean, it's not like I have a life here. That's really very nice of you, but I've been told that too much candy is bad for you. Garlic and avocado? Ooh, yuck! That didn't do anything useful. Thank you. That's really very sweet. You are the kindest man I know. You sure have been a lot of places. The only place I've been besides the lake is a swamp, and that's not exactly a tourist attraction. I may have been places while I was alive, but I can't remember back that far. It was great talking to you again. Come back soon. You cast the reversal spell. You cast the protection spell. It gives you a warm, safe feeling. Reversal spell is wearing thin. You can't. Ah, you feel much better now.
This headstone does not have an epitaph, yet. How about that old one? Death is just nature's way of telling you to slow down. The inscription on this, the gravestone is You examine the door closely. It's massive and well made. A large lock secures the door. Above the door is an intricate crest with a single word, Borgov, above it. It is deathly silent beyond the door. Your protection spell has worn off. Ah, you feel much better now. You cast the protection spell. It gives you a, a vicious slathering necrotor comes crashing through the woods after you. It doesn't look very friendly either. Cast the pro Ah Ah Searching for the fallen beast you find nothing of value. You Your magical lasso floats towards the tree and plucks a single ripe fruit from its branches. Your protection spell has worn off.
There's something strange about this bush. Maybe it's the eyes. Oh, forget it. It's probably... There's something... The bush looks a little strange, almost as though it is sitting rather than growing in its place. You are near the northeastern corner of the forest.
It's a banner. It looks like an ugly cross between a spider and a bat. It's also very fast, with has sharp, nasty claws and fangs. Pine trees grow in profusion. You have entered an eerie deserted graveyard. Strange moans wail through the trees, and mysterious lights seem to flicker and fade among the tombstones. Two large crypts dominate the cemetery. You have a bad feeling about this place. There doesn't seem to be any immediate danger, but you suspect that death lies among the crypts and tombstones in this place. The inscription on this head... You feel a chill go through you as you enter this part of the forest, as if a cold wind suddenly sprang up from nowhere. You are going to show me the way to town. Ah, you feel much better now. Things are so strange. Did you go away? Why are you greeting me again? me? What's happened to me? Everything is so strange. I don't understand. I... I live in town. Somewhere in town. I... I've got to get home. Why are you saying that? Why are you trying to hurt me? I'm lost in... I don't understand what's going on. Please don't talk so. It's bad luck to speak of the dead. The ghostly apparition vanishes.
cast the protection. You catch the top of the gate with your grapnel and clamber up the rope. A few moments later, you slip over the gate and into the town. Your protection spell has worn off. A shiver of cold comes over you. You sense no danger, but even so, you find yourself afraid. Find yourself letting go of the staff very quickly. You hear movement on the other side of the door. They all turn to stare at you, then go back to talking. You get a fine meal of roast lamb garnished with red cabbage. Oh, and uh, liberally flavoured with garlic. I am well, as always. Besides the ones that come in here, the shopkeeper knows everything they could. Here we are, sitting around here, minding our own business, Cochise, and here you waltz up and interrupt us. Yeah, yeah. 
Here's ten bucks. Get a real haircut, okay? You don't seem to realize we're very important men around here. Right. Just because no one else seems to think so doesn't invalidate the point. You know, our little town's remained unchanged for generations. Oh, yeah. Our forefathers have always lived here in peace and quiet. Except for the time when the cult came here. Ooh, the cult. <laughs> well, they're all a bunch of strangers anyway. Yeah, very strange. They didn't have much to do with the town, you know? Yeah, hardly anything. Just building that monastery here and all moving inside, that's all. But the cult did keep mostly to themselves. Yeah, he's right. No one had much to do with them. They were a very peaceful, quiet kind of cult. Yeah, really great people to be around, except for the strange noises and horrible screams that rose from the monastery at night. That all happened many, many years ago. Oh yeah, the cult broke up. They've all got kids of their own now. Yeah, well what about the Chernovi in the forest, huh? Come to think of it, no one knows if they're alive or what. Yeah, for all we know, they might just be wild stories to frighten little children and me. And what about the dark ones? Put a sock in it, will you? There are some things we must not speak about, Ivan. You know that. Well, excuse me all the pieces. We don't go for that rumor spreading stuff here, do we, Ivan? No way, Hans. Oh, never. Oh, except for that one little cocktail waitress, you know. But we don't gossip about our neighbors in Moldavia, do we, Ivan? Well, no, but uh, you did used to tell everyone about the time Olga caught Boris drinking with us when he was supposed to be minding the store. Hey, hey, hey. That wasn't gossip. It was just a semi-funny story. And Franz... What about the story you tell about the time you saw Yuri and Bella in the garden one night? What was that? Hey, Yuri, you're okay, all right? So, you see, we do not spread rumors here. Pardon me while I wax eloquent, but once, many years ago, huge herds of Fragrant elephants roamed freely in this particular valley. Oh yeah. In the good old days, peanut farming would have made you a billionaire. Once, long ago, I had a successful career. And I was also an elephant herder. You kidding? Everyone used to have a pet elephant. Oh yeah. I remember mine. I married her. Yeah. She was great for vacuuming up peanuts from your rugs. Not only that, but elephants are very clean and modest as well. They all just went bathing with their trunks, don't you know? Hey, yeah, nice thing about elephants. Very easy to house make, you know? They hardly ever made mistakes. <laughs> Unless they got excited, okay? Unfortunately, elephants get excited easily. Houses got broken that way. This really brings back sad memories. Please, let's talk about something uplifting like last year's famine. They all ignore you as usual. Lock the door to your room and go in.
it's too dangerous. You'd have to climb over the roof to get out. After some rest, you feel better. The stone carvings on the dark building seem to writhe in the moonlight. You get the feeling that they are hungry and waiting for something or someone. A sense of great danger and hunger comes from near the door of the massive stone building. You are you to do that. There's only a certain amount of punishment your body can stand on any given day. Enough pain, enough gain for now. Try again tomorrow. You try to climb over the gate but slip. You'll need more practice to make it over. The massive gate to this town is securely barred to protect it from things that go bump in the night. You cannot leave the town this way. These trees look too difficult for an unskilled person like yourself to climb. This does not seem to be the best place to do that. This is not a good place to practice throwing. The massive gate to this town is securely barred to protect it from things that go bump in the night. You cannot leave the town this way. You try to climb over the gate but slip. You'll need more practice to make it over. The massive gate... You try to climb over... The mass... You're getting tired. Yeah.
You catch the top of the gate with your grapnel and clamber up the rope. A few moments later, you slip over the gate and into the town. Using your rope and grapnel, you climb up to the inn window. You have the feeling you are being watched. You see a small, hairy, sad-looking creature. It doesn't say. Not many big people see Domovoy. Most not look. You, something special. Maybe so? You, hero? Mordavia, big hero need. Plenty powerful hero. Maybe you be soon. Learn much. Practice much. Soon, plenty big hero. Domovoy am I, Domovoy I be, over places Domovoy watch, protect the inn, do I. By big people Domovoy not seen, you stranger are, maybe hero, maybe not. Show myself to you I do, speak to you I will, maybe good things for people will you do. Maybe good thing for Domovoy you do. Some night soon, talk we will again. Domovoy good luck bring. Maybe Domovoy help you. You Domovoy help. In where I am living. In Domovoy am I. Luck I bring. Way things go now, think most luck bad. Things at inn not good. No people come. Innkeeper and wife very, very unhappy. Mordavia very, very sad place. Even Domovoy cannot help here. Oh, too much dark magic. Too much we speak. Too much I talk. Sometime else we speak, sometime else I talk. Bad place here anymore. Good many years ago, but going very bad now. Many bad things here, you find out. Maybe talk again. You come down other night. Maybe have much to say. You unlock the door to your room and go in. 